Hello guys, welcome to Nose Info. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to install and configure TrueNAS. So without further ado, let's begin this tutorial. Okay, so as you can see I'm in a web browser. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, of course, I'm going to have to uh, download TrueNAS first, so I'm just going to type in TrueNAS ISO. And you can see uh, the first link here, download TrueNAS Core. So you can see the minimum requirements here. We have 64-bit CPU, 16 gigs of RAM. 16 gigabyte boot drive and at least one attached disk. Uh, hardware grade is not required, and of course, there must be a network port. Now, despite this being said, I have tried using TrueNAS on my own system before uh, on one of my old servers, which had only two cores and about four gigabytes of RAM as it ran on an i3. And to be honest, it worked absolutely fine. There was slight uh, problems, but for most part, about 99% of the time, it worked fine. So, uh, just to skip this, you could press just press no thank you, I've already signed up. And then just click on download stable. Click on advanced. Click on proceed. And it will now download the ISO. Don't worry about this uh, screen, nothing is happening here that's malicious. It's just trying to download the ISO from the server. Okay, so as you can see, I'm now in my uh, hypervisor. Uh, this is Proxmox, by the way. Um, just one thing to note, make sure you have at least two drives attached to this uh, device that you're now installing TrueNAS on. And also just make, make sure that you've got an Ethernet cable handy and uh, all is set to go. And also make sure that you've written the uh, disk image to a USB or disk. It could be any one of the two. So as you can see, we're here. I'm just going to press 1. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to press number one, install slash upgrade. We're going to click on OK, which is enter. This computer has less than, rec than the recommended 8 gigabytes of RAM. Operation without enough RAM is not recommended. Do you want to continue? In this case, we can. So now you need to choose your drive. So as you can see, I have two drives here. I have one that's 20 gigabytes in size, and I have one that is 48 gigabytes in size. We see that the drives are called DA0 and DA1. Excuse me. So in order to select the correct drive, you highlight the one of your choice, and you press the space bar to highlight it, and then press enter to click on OK. Warning. This will erase all partitions and data on DA0, which in this case is the 20 gigabyte drive, and you can't use DA0 for sharing data. Yes, this is a very, very uh, uh, serious uh, point I should make here. Um, if you do have only one drive in your TrueNAS, uh, this is not going to work. You will need to have a, a minimum of at least two drives ready to go. So that's just a quick reminder if everyone is installing this on an old laptop, just have, just plug in a USB and use that as your boot drive. Or you can live right on the edge, use an SD card. Just anything, as long as it's not the main drive that you want to be using to store your data. Uh, of course, a note here is that you can install things on SATA, SS, SAS, or NVMe SSDs. And of course, that's, I will also recommend that as well. I'm installing this on a, an NVMe SSD myself, so that's all good. Of course, we're going to click enter to proceed with the installation. We now have to enter our password. <clears throat> I'm just going to uh, put down a password now. And I'm going to click on OK. So now we can either uh, choose to boot in either BIOS or UEFI. Now, if you have a older system, so let's say your computer is from about let's say 2007. Uh, BIOS mode would be the better option here because it probably will not come with UEFI. 
Whereas if you have a more modern system, let's say my server, I'm currently running this on right now, was from 2017, I would use the UEFI option. Now, of course, because this is only a virtual machine, it really does not matter. But just for, you know, just for best, best practices, I would recommend using UEFI. And you can see it's now installing the uh, base operating system. And you can see it's one step out of three. So this will take some time, so go get yourself a cup of coffee or whatever. As you can see, TrueNAS has been installed on DA0, which of course is the drive that we selected to install the uh, OS, and we now need to remove and reboot the installation. Well, we need to reboot the system, and we need to remove the installation media, so let's say your CD or USB drive. So we're now going to press number three, reboot system, and press OK or and enter. Uh, apologies for the um, <clears throat> slight technical difficulties. Uh, you've probably seen that... Um, uh, the font has slightly changed. Uh, turns out my um, BIOS is actually still set to BIOS and not UEFI, so uh, that's a bit stupid on my part, but oh well. I did not know that um, BIOS was the default on um, on this uh, system, so that's kind of funny, but oh well. But as you can see, it's now loading everything, it's just generating stuff at this point. Looks like a bunch of stars all over your screen, isn't it nice? Very, very nice. So as you can see, we are now <clears throat> at the, um, we're here, we're at the web interface. So, well, we're here obviously. So, um, we could do a bunch of configurations, so 1 to 11, we can either do, configure the network interfaces, configure the, la the link aggregation, configure the VLANs, etc, 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 etc. We can even configure static routes, or static IP addresses, I'm assuming. But anyway. We can now go over to the, um, the web browser and type in this IP address, 192.168.1149. This will not be your IP address in this case, but well, it could be. But the web interface you interface is at, well, this address. On your screen, type in the address you have on your command line, not my one. You type it on your one. But anyway, let's go over to the web browser and get started. Okay, so as you can see, I'm now a web browser. I'm just going to type in uh, the address, so 192.168.1.149. And as you can see, I'm at the true NAS core um, system here. So we need to type in root for the username and the password that we set during the installation. And as you can see, I'm now at the dashboard. <coughs> So as you can see, we have the um, <clears throat> we have the overall uh, system information here. We have our networking details. We have our CPU details, our memory or RAM details, and we have support. So as you can see, we can now press check for updates. We can refresh just to see if there's any. Ah. There's a slight SSL certificate failure. Maybe it's because we're using HTTP. Let's just try using HTTPS. That might help a little bit better. We need to log in again. Let's try it again. Oh, well. Anyways, as you can see, everything is all over here. Accounts. We can look at users and groups. I don't know what that was. Uh, we've got system, we've got our everything here, we've got our, even our directory services, <clears throat> where we can create 
I think our own no we don't I don't think we create our own active directory I think we just um, use it from Windows but there you go have our own jail system have VMs so stuff like even I have my own Proxmox system I was thinking about using TrueNAS but I preferred that even have our own shell so oh it appears this is a different type of shell but there you go but as you can see, all is well. So that's it. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you would like to request a video, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Or you can check out our Discord server, Twitter and Instagram pages, which are the links in the video description. Join me next time where I'll be uh, showing you how to set up users and groups and things like that. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.